This lecture is part of an online undergraduate course on complex analysis and will be about how to use the residue calculus to some series. Um, so the idea is as follows. What we do is um, the residue calculus says that if we've got if we integrate around a contour C, then the integral around this contour of f of z dz is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of all residues inside, assuming there are a finite number of points inside the contour where the function is not holomorphic. And this looks totally useless for summing series because first of all there are only going to be a finite number of points inside the contour in general if the contour is finite, and secondly working out the integral around this contour is directly is going to be an incredibly difficult problem. In fact usually we can only do it by um, first of all, adding up the residues inside. So this doesn't really seem to help at first sight. Well, I think the way to explain how to do it is to do an example. Um, and let's do Euler's example, where we look at 1 over 2 squared, one, 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared, and so on. So this is a very famous example. It's, it's one you can't really do using the sort of elementary techniques you learn in an introductory calculus course. You can do it without using complex variables, using something, I mean, you, you, you can do it fairly easily using something like Fourier analysis, but that's a sort of rather powerful technique about equivalent in strength to complex analysis in some sense. Um, so the idea is as follows. What we do is we try and find a function whose residues are more or less given by these terms here. And so let's do this. We can take 1 over tan of z and this is singularities at points minus pi, 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on, all multiples of pi. And the residue at these points is always 1. Um, and that's because at, at, for, for z approximately 0, tan of z is approximately z, so 1 over tan of z is going to be something like 1 over z, which has residue 1. And now if we look at 1 over z squared tan of z, um, we, we, we see that the residue at these points um, um, will, be, it will be 1 over minus 2 pi squared, and 1 over minus pi squared, 1 over pi squared, 1 over 2 pi squared, and so on. <coughs> and something funny happens at 0. Um, because the residue can't be 1 over 0 squared because that would be infinite and 0 isn't infinite. So what we see is what's happening at 0? There's something funny going on. The pole actually is order 3 rather than order 1. So we, we have to work a bit harder to find out what the pole is. And now you notice these terms here are up to a factor of pi squared, exactly what we need in order to work out Euler's series. So what we see is that the sum of all residues is equal to this mystery term, which is the residue at 0, plus, and then we've got these factors, 2 over pi squared times the series we want to add up. Um, so we've got to do two things to find the sum of this series. We've got to find the sum of the residues and we've got to find the residue at zero. So, so let's do let's find the sum of the residues. And the key point is we want to show that the sum of the residues is actually zero. So we're not going to do this by working out the contour integral, which as I said, we can't really do except by adding up the series. What we do is we're going to show that the the the, the, the limit of the contour integral actually becomes zero, which is much easier. So let's take a look at what's going on. Um, so the, 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 we're going to look at the function 1 over tan, squ t tan z times z squared. And this is holomorphic except at these points 0, pi, 2 pi, minus pi, and so on. So, 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 so here the function we're integrating becomes infinite. And what we're going to do is we're going to integrate over a big square. And the big square is, is going to look like this. So this is going to be the point R. And it's going to, it's going to go halfway between two of these poles. 
Um, so here we've, we've gone between 2 pi and 3 pi, but in general we would go between n pi and n plus 1 pi. Um, and we want to show uh, that, that if this contour is c, then the integral over c of 1 over tan of z times z squared dz is small. So how can we do that? Well, it's bounded by um, the length of the path. So this is the length of c times the maximum of, of, of the function on the path. So what's that? Well, we get a 1 over r squared. So this is a bound for 1 over z squared. And then we get a sort of mystery factor. We want this to be a bound for 1 over tan of z. Well, um, how do we even know that 1 over tan of z is bounded on this contour? Well, it's bounded because um, on this bit here, 1 over tan of z is it's going to be approximately 1 over i. And because we saw that tan of z is very close to i, provided you're, provided you're in the upper half plane and not too close to the real axis. And similarly down here, 1 over tan of z is approximately minus 1 over minus i. So that's as long as you're set, say a distance at least 1 from the real axis. Well what about this little segment here? Well, well here 1 over tan of z is bounded because um, it's, it's just a continuous function on a closed interval and it's bounded independent of what r is provided r is going exactly halfway between these because tan of z is periodic. So, so there is some bound for 1 over tan of z and I don't really care what it is. Um, you could probably take m equals 2 for example and that would give you a bound but we don't care. Um, there's just some bound um, and the only key point is that this does not depend On, on r. And now we notice that this bound tends to 0 as r uh, tends to infinity because we've got a 1 over r squared here and an r here. So this means the sum of the residues tends to 0 as r tends to infinity here. This is the sum of the residues inside the contour and that means the sum of all residues is actually going to be 0. So um, um, what we've got to do now is to figure out this slightly mysterious residue at zero. So, 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 so let's figure out the residue of 1 over z squared tan z at z equals zero. Well, what does 1 over tan of z look like? Well, it's cosine of z over sine of z. And this is about 1 minus c squared over 2 factorial divided by z minus c cubed over 3 factorial and so on. And we, we don't care about these terms. We, we, we need to go this far as you will see in a moment. And we can work this out by um, dividing these two. And we find this is approximately z to the minus 1 minus c over 3 and then plus some terms that we don't need so we won't bother working them out. And then 1 over z squared tan of z is now going to have a series expansion which is z to the minus 3 minus c to the minus 1 over 3 plus c times something we don't care about and so on. So in order to find the residue, you remember we need the coefficient of z to the minus 1. So, so it's this term that gives us the residue. And now you see we need to go to z to the minus 1 here, which means we need to go as far as z squared here and z cubed here to get the residue. Um, so you see that working out residues of poles of order 3 is kind of a bit trickier than poles of order 1 because we need more of the, uh, 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 of the power series of all the functions. So um, now we find that minus 1 over 3 plus 2 over pi times 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared and so on is equal to 0. And that's because this is the residue at 0 and this is, um, this is the sum of the other residues. And this comes because it's 1 over 2 pi i times the limit as the contour tends to infinity 
of the integral over, over this square. Um, so this gives us the solution. We can just, from this, we can obviously work up this series here. Sorry, that should be a pi squared. And we find 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared and so on is equal to pi squared over 6. Um, and um, you can obviously do some variations on this. So as an exercise, I'll just say show 1 over 1 to the 4 plus 1 over 2 to the 4 and so on is equal to pi to the 4 over 90. Um, Euler did this one as well. And obviously what you do is you copy the previous argument except you use 1 over tan of z times z to the 4. And the main problem is it's a little bit more difficult working out the power series expansion of 1 over tan of z because you need to go up to z to the 4 or some. Uh, I guess z to the 5, or z to the whatever. Um, so um, now I've, I've done exponent 2 and exponent 4. What about exponent 3? And Euler didn't work this out, and nobody has ever been able to work out a simple formula for the sum of this series. So why doesn't the... Um, why doesn't the residue calculus work for this? Well, um, if you look, what you're really working out is the sum over all integers n of some rational function of n, and provided rn is not equal to zero. So we weren't really working out a sum over all positive integers. We were working out a sum over all integers. And this works whenever r is a rational function um, with degree of r is less than or equal to minus 2. So that's the degree of the um, numerator minus the degree of the denominator. And we need degree less than or equal to minus 2 in order to show the integral over this square tends to 0. So you remember to show this square tends to 0, we sort of had this factor, um, we had a factor r for the length of the contour, and then we ended up dividing it by r squared um, coming from 1 over z squared. And we get an r squared because this is because this is because one over z squared had degree um, at, at most minus two. So so if it had degree minus one, the integral over the square wouldn't tend to zero. So it um, we can work out this sum for all rational functions, um, provided the degree is is at most minus two. Now. If we want to work out 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared and so on, now this is not a sum over all positive integers, but that doesn't matter because we can write as a half of sum over n not equal to 0 of 1 over n squared. So, um, and we can work out this using the, um, the, the, the residue calculus. On the other hand, if we try 1 over 1 cubed plus 1 over 2 cubed and so on, this is not equal to a half of sum over n not equal to 0 of 1 over n cubed. And the, the, the problem is that this, the, this term here is actually equal to 0 because all the terms cancel out. I mean, we've got a 1 over, um, say, minus 3 cubed and a 1 over 3 cubed, and these just cancel out. They're just 0 because this, this, this minus sign and, and, and the fact that this is odd mean that we get a minus sign in front of this. So we can certainly work out the sum over all n cubed of 1 over n cubed. Um, well, we don't even need the residue calculus for that because it's just a, 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 a sum is just 0. And so, so it's useless for finding this sum here. Well, um, so I'll, I'll finish up by um, setting another exercise. Um, and this one will be Let's try and work out the sum 1 over 1 cubed minus 1 over 3 cubed plus 1 over 5 cubed and so on. Um, well, you may think, why on earth am I setting this as an exercise? Haven't I just shown that if you've got a, a cube in the exponent, then you can't sum it? Well, um, the point is you can in this case because this is just equal to half of um, 1 over minus 3 cubed minus 1 over minus 1 cubed plus 1 over 1 cubed, minus 1 over minus 3 cubed, and so on. And now you notice these terms don't actually cancel out, because um, here this is, um, sorry, that's a 
plus 3. Here this is minus 1 over 3 cubed, but this is also minus 1 over 3 cubed because the alternating signs sort of cancel out with the signs you get from the denominator. So there is some hope of working out this using the residue calculus, but if you try doing it using the method I showed earlier, you'll get completely stuck because um, the problem is we've got these um, minus signs here. So what can we do about this? Well, 1 over tan of z won't work because it's got a residue of plus 1 here, not minus 1. But, but let's look at 1 over cosine of z. Well, it's holomorphic except at z equals plus or minus pi over 2, um, um, 3 pi over 2, and so on. And you can work out the residues at these points, and the residues are sometimes minus 1. So we actually get some signs which can account for this. So what you have to do is to calculate the residues of this, and once you've done that, you can sort of copy the previous um, example, except you use 1 over z cubed times cosine of z. So this will have residues at plus or minus pi over 2, plus or minus 3 pi over 2, and so on. And it will also have a residue at 0 because of this 1 over z cubed. So now using this function, we can copy the method we used for Euler's sum. And you should be able to find um, this sum here, which I'll try and remember to put in the description of the video. OK, so next lecture, we'll probably be applying the residue calculus to the Riemann zeta function in order to prove its functional equation.